Hey guys, welcome back to 5150. Today we're going to be installing upper and lower control arms on our 2020 JL Jeep. These are Rubicon Expresses. Um, these are a mid-arm kit. We got uh, the top ones here are the upper and uh, upper rear and front upper and the bottoms are the rear lower and front lower. So the lower arms are longer. So uh, these are the Rubicon Express like I said. Got some directions here. These are the arms. So these have the super flex joint here. Um, this part here will go up to the uh, frame rail. And this here is a jam nut. This is an inch and a half. Uh, and these are just some super flex joint here. So again, these are the um, rear uppers on that one. There's there's two sets. It does come with uh, uh, Zerk fittings that we have to install. These are the front uppers here. Again, we have the super flex joint. This is adjustable, so this is what uh, how you set the length, that's why they call them adjustable. You turn it in, makes the arm shorter, turn it out, makes the arm longer. This will mount to the axle side on the front and this will mount up to the frame and we'll mount this in towards the engine on both sides. So it'll sit something like this. So on both sides, this will be the passenger side. So that's the uh, upper arms. Uh, these are the part numbers. This is for the, the lower arms and the uppers. That one is just missing, but let's go ahead and open this up. These things are actually pretty beefy. Uh, nice thing about Rubicon Express, they are a lifetime warranty. Again, Ryan decided to go with the Super flex, so this is a super flex joint here. It's adjustable by turning this uh, in and out um, again. So this will be uh, on the rear lower. And uh, we got, this looks like actually a bigger nut. I'm not sure the size of it. But we'll probably be using an adjustable wrench. This will be the front lowers. So here's the Zerk nuts that are in here in this bag. Right here. Comes with hardware. Let's figure all that out. This one's actually got some misalignment um, bushings. So on this one, what's different, these are, these are the joints that actually go in the super flex. They're just not put together on this one. So we'll have to install these um, into the joint flex uh, joint in here. Again, they're adjustable. And this bracket here is where the brake lines will attach. We need a tape measure because we're going to measure the arms. We're going to measure the stock ones and um, just see what the eyelet, the eyelet um, length is. Uh, we'll just use a big adjustment wrench for the jam nut, a little mallet, some basic can tools. Um, so we use our impact. Okay, guys, let's go get this install started. Brian's installing the Zerk fitting. It's a 3 8 inch open inch wrench. We had to use, can't use a closed on these obviously, a box in. So we're just getting in those, we'll adjust them once we get in, how we're gonna rotate them. So we have got the, Ryan did purchase the new um, wheels for the JL. Pretty excited about them. Um, that'll be coming up in our next video. We'll give you a hint. They are beadlocks, a true beadlock. So the Zerks are in there. We're going to grease these up before we put them in. We also need to install these bushings for the super flex joint all right 
gonna go ahead and install spacers, bushings, whatever you want to call them. I'll do that on both sides. Like that. Now we're gonna put some uh, grease in there. All right, guys, we're going to try to do this without lifting the vehicle, putting the jacks under it and jack stands. Uh, we'll leave the wheel on and just uh, take the arms off and then uh, just try doing one at a time. Right, so first thing we're going to do is just loosen up the brake line, and get it out of the way. Now we're going to lower the... Lower arm bolt. Uh, you want to loosen the top one before you take that out because it'll shoot down. All right, so we're going to lower the rear. What size are those, Ryan? Uh, 24 and 21. That's going pretty easy. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this out, grab the other one, and we're going to measure from from this eyelet to that eyelet. So that's in the center of the eyelet, the center of the eyelet. This looks like it's about 24 inches, huh? Yeah, 24 in the dot. So 24 in the dot, okay. So since we have a Two and a half inch lift. It's just a better measurement out of it. Okay. This is in the center. About 24 too. Right there, about 24. Okay. So then we're just going to take this jam net, just kind of just snug it up while we install it. Now, this goes to the frame side. That goes to the front end. This bend goes towards the inside. And the bend here, like Ryan said, goes towards the inside, which is facing the motor. All right, so you can see, we're using the same OEM hardware fasteners. As you guys, in our previous videos, we've already installed the lift springs. We've already installed the shocks and uh, anti-rocks. So Ryan's just trying to get that hole lined up in the center where you can put the lower bolt in. Just kind of rocking the G. There we go. Gonna leave them loose. So we're just gonna leave them loose for now. And you'll notice that we installed the Zerk fittings towards the top. That way we can get a grease gun in there and they don't get hit um, when we're rock crawling. So we're going to mount the brake mount right to the control arm right here in the bolt and everything comes with the kit. Yeah, so this is going to work out pretty easy if we can do that to all four control arms without having to lift and up, take tires off. It'll make this a lot quicker. All right, so these are a 13 millimeter wrench or a half inch, both inner and outer, the nut and the bolt, Ryan. Yep. Okay. We'll torque everything to factory specs. All right, so there's the brake line. So you can see we're one eighth of the way done. That was pretty painless. 
All right, so now we're gonna do the uh, upper control arm and this is the driver's lower and now we're gonna do the driver's upper. Which will be replacing the factory one, which is right there. All right, so this is gonna be the upper driver's side control arm. This side will go towards the axle. This will go to the frame side. Ryan's gonna install the, the Zerk fitting. So on the uppers, we're gonna use the existing bushings that's inside the axle so there's no Zerk fitting. Same thing here on the passenger side. So the kit comes with the new hardware for the upper and the Zerk fitting in the bag. Okay. So that's a heat shield that helps protect the uh, rubber bushing inside the upper control arm uh, next to the exhaust. So Ryan went ahead and uh, removed the lower bolt 10 millimeter. Now he's doing the top bolt. There we go. So that's the heat shield. Now that'll give us access to so get to the upper control arm bolt. Up Which there. is an 18. measure it and see what it looks like so we're going to measure from eyelet to eyelet the other was 24 this looks like it's about 20 and a quarter right? mm, 20 or 20 and maybe 3 sixteenths let's see yeah i would say 20 and 3 sixteenths okay now we're going to measure the upper control arm from the center of that eyelet right there to here and we're sitting at 20 and about 3 sixteenths okay I think we're close there's the upper control mount for the front end and the axle side and there's the rear frame mount Okay, we're putting the upper control arm in. So we're using the grade eight bolt that came with the kit that has a shoulder on it versus the factory one didn't. Installing the flag nut. So we're just gonna do uh, the driver's side in the video. The passenger is exactly the same. It has a heat shield over that where right over the rear part of the upper control arm. All right, guys, we have the upper and control arms in. You can see it there. So on the rear, we end up using the grade eight hardware that came with the control arm. It has a, a nice shoulder for that um, super flex joint. We end up collapsing that upper control arm down to the same as the factory, which was, uh, I think, 20 and 3 16 uh, That's the shortest that arm can go. What that does is, uh, depending on how you adjust these arms up or down, so if you increase the, the bottom, length that will put the pinion up this way or if you lower uh, make it uh, shorten the arm it puts it down this way so it changes your pinion angle but the big biggest thing is the caster uh, for the alignment but we'll put this on alignment rack and get that all figured out um, so on the passenger side we're going to do the exact same thing we still got to put on the um, for the upper control arm the um, the shield the heat shield um, so Fairly easy, we did that without jacks. 
we'll go ahead and uh, do the passenger side now and then we'll uh, come back and start filming the, the rear. See the lower arm there? Again, we just uh, still gotta torque everything down. There's the upper control arm. And the lower, you can see how we had the brake line attached to the mount there. Okay. We're doing the upper control arms. These are a eight millimeter. The uppers were a three eighths. Eight millimeter or five sixteenths, pretty much the same. So there they are. Again, those were the three eighths. And all right, we're gonna go ahead and pull out the other control arms and go ahead and get this started. Okay, you'll notice there's the Zerk fitting here and then on the bottom, the opposite side, there's another hole to bring with the Zerk. So there's a plug that's an allen which is a 1 8 inch allen and we're going to go ahead and just screw that in to seal up the hole okay ryan's going to go after the lower control arm bolt in front of the rear tire there Pass, uh, this is on the driver's side what size is that 21. all right and then loosen that rear bolt there 21 yep Okay, there's the rear lower three quarters yeah so it looks like 19 three and quarters. three quarters okay all right so this is gonna be we're gonna make this 19 and three quarters so we have to shorten this one a little bit And that's 19 three quarters right there. I'm just gonna go ahead and just tighten up the jam nut. Okay, I'm gonna put grease inside the... All right, so the pusher goes to the frame mount and the super flex joint goes to the rear axle. Just like that. So far it's been a pretty easy job, huh, Ryan? Yep. So we're using the stock hardware here. Yeah. That's it. Take that bolt off on the other side. Give us some room, there we go. size is that? 21. That's a 21 millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the upper bolt for the control arm, rear control arm. Upper control arm, driver side bolt. All right, trying to get this rear bolt out here. It's running into this uh, bump stop. Uh, we put this on on our last video when we did the spring install for these. So we're going to have to remove these two bolts and able to pull that bolt out all the way. So. Pull that bolt out. All right, so now I gotta take the upper off. Got that removed. Now we gotta do the upper one, which is gonna be that one right there. So we have this all the way collapsed as much as we can. So this was 17 and 3 eighths, the original one. 
This is gonna be 17 and about five eighths. Is that in the middle? Look at here, yeah, this is about 17 5 eighths. It's three quarters right there, maybe three quarters. So this is gonna be about, a, you know, a half inch longer. We can adjust the caster out with the upper control arm and the lower, so not a big deal, just something that we noticed. Hang on, let me see where it's at. All right, Ryan's putting the rear arm on. And you can see it there. Like I said, we're not going to torque anything down until we get all the arms done. Alright guys, we just installed the upper and lower uh, Rubicon Express uh, super joint, super flex joint. There's the arms there. There's the lower arm. And then the upper arm, this is the driver's side. We just took it for a quick drive. Ryan just torqued everything down. It definitely rides smoother with those joints. Um, pretty easy install. We did it without even lifting it up. So this gets the suspension probably, what, 95% done, Ryan? Anything else on the suspension? Uh, it's probably 80% done. 80% what else you got planned to do? Hydros, hydro bumps. Hydro bumps. Uh, we got to give an alignment. So let's go take it over our little flex area and give it a flex test, huh? Sure. Okay. Looks like the driver's side bump stops doing its job. Bump stops keeping that tire out of the fender. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.